So uh, you may notice this big track right above us. That is the monorail. LVmonorail.com, I think, is the information. Las Vegas monorail. It travels uh, behind the hotels on the main strip. And, you know, six bucks a day, we got transport on that uh, to get to and from the Sands Convention Center for SHOT Show 2017. Of course, so we thought. This morning, we have a new product breakfast. Sorry, I'm catching my breath while we're walking because it's cold and I'm tired. My coffee's only sort of kicked in. And we're walking really fast because we're supposed to be at the breakfast, the new product breakfast for media at SHOT. At what time? Seven. Seven. Guess what time the monorail starts running? That would be seven. Yeah, didn't catch that till this morning. So now we're walking. Uh, I mean, it's only a mile-ish, but at least we found the back way here. Instead of walking, the strip is over there, a block or so on the other side of those uh, hotels. And it's a complete joke to try to get anywhere fast out there. So we're doing it on the back way. So what we're gonna do now is our top five products from SHOT Show. The coolest things we saw yesterday, that was Tuesday, uh, the 17th of January, 2017, and uh, that was the first day that the floor was open at SHOT. So, let me start off with uh, some things that I've been looking forward to seeing, and uh, finally got to spend some time in the booth. I actually spent probably 20-25 minutes with the president of Maxim Defense Industries, and you may know them for the PDW and other, you know, collapsible lightweight stocks that they have made for a year or two, or actually I'm not sure how long they've been making them. I know I first noticed them last year. So what he showed us, he showed us a mixture of some products that are available today, some prototype products they're working on, and some, uh, products that aren't available in the civilian market, but they do offer them through other channels, uh, you know, like military contracts and things like that. So rather than get into a specific product, I'll just say these things are badass. I mean, across the board here, we're, see, we got a sidewalk over here. Good. We're dodging, uh, dodging cars and, uh, walking while we're doing this. So, um, I'll overlay some photos of a couple different full rifle builds, SBR builds, pistol builds using different collapsible, foldable, lightweight, skeletonized. They had all different kinds of stocks. They had a 9mm lower, uh, was, I think it was an AR type, and there was the 18K version. Uh, across the board, go check them out. Really cool stuff. Okay, so that's my first one. And what was my second one? Okay, what was the second one? I don't remember. What was yours? Well, we went through uh, Legacy Sports International and they have a couple of 22 rifles that are really good. The Webley has got uh, so set uh, 22 long rifle. It's a ring fire uh, bolt action rifle that has a carbon fiber um, barrel that looks very good. And we're going to be able to test that and put it on the 22 project for you guys. Uh, the other thing that I went and looked for uh, is the manufacturer is Franklin Armory and they uh, made and designed the binary trigger. The binary trigger lets you release two shots, one by pulling the trigger and one by releasing the trigger. It, it also has a semi-auto and then of course a safe. So that's where you would select it. At the selector, you Yeah, three position binary, selector, three right? Position selector. That's awesome. And, and it really doubles your shooting uh, speed just by doing that binary position. Oh, I think we're about to move, are we? Nope. No, we still got the red hand. Okay. Uh, I, I went to, uh, I, got, I got set free for a little while. Jeff, uh, I lost him. Um, so I went to see uh, Nighthawk Custom. Um, they have a wide selection of pistols. I mean, the, the detailing is amazing. Some of the color combos, the finishes. Hold that thought. Here we go. And we're rolling. We appreciate you bearing with us here. Um, I, I would really like, I feel like it's my responsibility to blame someone for the predicament we're in this morning. Um, I'm not really one to fall on my sword, folks. But, you know, while they're here, I don't want to actually blame either one of them. So, uh, Bump's not with us, so... Mike Bump, this is your fault, dude. Okay, hold on. You were saying? 
Uh, just the, uh, the some of the the combos, the finish combos, and the detailing was amazing. Um, price wise, I mean they're they're up there, but it's it's a custom pistol, um, a wide variety. It was at 50 different pistols that I was drilling out. With. And that's the one that had the revolver with the big rail on the side yeah, the and everything. Rail on both sides and the top. Yeah. Did you see what I did here? Yeah. We were walking out of sync and it was bouncy I saw like crazy. That. So I, there we go. Get in stride with that. you. Yeah. That worked. Okay. Uh, so what was the last one? I had one more I was going to talk about. It's on a piece of paper. It probably is on the piece of paper. If it's still in the room. Oh, oh, oh um, the, uh, the suppressor. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Operator, operator suppressor system. I think that's how they say it. OSS. And, you know, so when I was in the Air Force, I was a crew chief. I was an aircraft mechanic. And uh, I was not technically a jet engine mechanic. I was more of the, the crew chief's kind of a generalist. But I had enough exposure to jet engines, you know, a good portion of the tech school. Dude, turn your truck down. I'm trying to tape here. Sorry about that, folks. People are so rude sometimes. Um, a good portion of that school talked about the theory and operation of turbine engines. So we're walking by the booth for OSS, the little micro booth they had upstairs. I will show you some pictures of the of the booth and of the cans they have there. And uh, out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, is that a miniature turbine engine sitting on that table? And I was like, I stop and I look at it. And the dude, uh, Randy was his name, right? You know, I remember his name was Randy. Randy had this little sly grin on his face like, oh yeah, I see the gears are turning. I see you are, you are wrapping your head around the awesomeness that's in front of you. And you know what, Randy? You were right. Um, really, really cool design that dissipates. Um, okay, so let's talk about what, what, it, what it's supposed to do. Um, a problem that silencers have. Um, generally speaking, the typical design has a series of baffles that when the bullet exits the barrel and enters those baffle chambers, there's a spike in pressure. Okay, so as the bullet passes, that pressure bleeds behind it from the chamber the bullet was just in to the next one. So you get these pressure spikes all the way along and Oh, hello, shuttle bus. Okay, so at some point the bullet exits the end and you have a big pressure bleed off all at once. And uh, because that big pressure bleed off doesn't happen until the bullet has exited, where does that pressure go? You know, a lot of it has to get pushed back the barrel. <laughs> so if we're talking about a bolt action rifle, it's all happening so fast that the bolt's not open and you don't get gas in the face. But a lot of people are shooting suppressed on semi-automatic platforms where, you know, that, that bolt may be open either before the pressure has started to bleed off um, or, you know, before it's fully bled off, which means they get a lot of blowback in the face, uh, which can be one thing, or it, the pressure's increased so it slams the bolt back harder. Holy crap! That's a lot of bottles, folks. I think some people here have a problem. So, anyhow, OSS suppressor with the radial pattern machine in the outside uh, has holes to bleed off all over, uh, you know, along the length of the tube, and then the cap has a bunch of holes to let that uh, uh, gas bleed out as well, so that you know you don't have the big pressure spikes. Let's cross the road again. Okay. All right because there's a sidewalk. And frankly, it smelled like someone took a crap back there and then peed on it. Uh, yeah, that was funky. Well, there's that hat you were looking for. Uh, no, I'll leave that for a moment, Okay, good. So, anyhow, those are our top five products from Tuesday, the 17th of January, 2017, at SHOT Show, the first day on the floor. And, you know, we saw a lot of other cool things, and we shot some videos. So go check out our videos for uh, Mantis has a product, Mantis X. It's a training system that has a sensor that goes on a firearm and an app for a tablet or smartphone that uh, helps you analyze the mechanics of your shot and correct any issues that would degrade your accuracy. Um, 
we'll put up a video shortly. It's been edited. It's uploading to. Oh, I was going to say it's uploading to YouTube, but then it occurred to me the slow internet in our marginally two-star hotel was going really slow this morning, and I. Uh... Oh, are we lost? Oh, good morning. And um, just occurred to me that I packed up that computer and it's in my first tactical backpack so it's not uploading right now uh, maybe I can get that rolling from the press room shortly but uh, anyhow that uh, Freedom Hunters is a charitable organization that takes uh, wounded warriors gold star families and folks like that on hunting trips you know help raise their spirits and things like that um, let's see what was the other video we did we did a Shepherd Scopes video where we talk about their optics. Welcome to the best team in Las Vegas. Do we work at Bally's? Caesars Entertainment, authorized personnel only. Should I, I guess we gotta cut through here. Under the tunnel and then out. All right. I think we're getting a little lost here. We're looking at the seedy underbelly of the casino area here. Um, Shepard Scopes, go check out that video. And uh, we've got some more. Oh, Criterion Barrels. We shot a video with Criterion Barrels. And uh, Mark from Performance Firearms came by and talked about how he uses Criterion Barrels. So uh, Josh at Criterion talks about their Tika T3 barrel that has an incredibly or get by the truck sorry that has an incredibly easy um, installation mechanism that requires only one tool a savage style barrel nut wrench that they provide I believe um, and you basically you screw it in you headspace it you tighten this little jam nut down and you're done it's like a 15 minute process and uh Lord, it's hot. Hot. Noisy. That's what I meant. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, Tom from American Defense Manufacturing uh, talked about how they use Criterion barrels. So Criterion with their Tiga T3, uh, Mark from Performance Firearms with uh, his... Silent Night 9mm SBR, which is really cool. Mark, you're hurting me that you hadn't sent me one yet. All right, I remember when you told me in May, oh yeah, I'll send you one of these. I'm trying not to take it personally that it got lost in the mail, Mark, because I like you. And I really like your firearms. So let's get that going. We want to get that reviewed. Um, and then Tom with ADM uh, talking about how they use. Uh, Criterion barrels for their uh, for some of their firearms as well. So go check that video out. And uh, you know if you hadn't yet, like, subscribe, share. Explain to me in the comments why you're still watching me ramble and walk down the back alleys here in Vegas. And uh, you know, act like we are staff at the different casinos and show up late to press breakfasts. All right. So until then, we'll see you at the range.